Welcome back, welcome back everyone to your one-stop shop for Agile games, the rules you're going to need, hopefully an ideal example of how to play them, as well as any tools and resources you're going to need in the links in the description below. But uh, pull up a seat. If you are already sitting, pull up a seat for a friend. And if you're both seating, enjoy. Uh, you may know the coin flip game already, uh, but if you don't, this is a great virtual introduction to it. Uh, there's going to be some great learnings. There's, you can usually play this with between five to 10 people. It's usually played with 10, but today we're going to play with five just to show you that you can. And uh, we're going to go over the evils of batch sizing and or how evil, in general, large batch sizing is evil and batch sizing in itself is not so great. But on the flip side, we can get to one piece flow, which is of course better when we learn how to simplify uh, the work and so to speak. If you've learned something else, we'd love to have that in the description below. Uh, the best thing that we can do with this channel is to uh, combine our knowledge and to uh, share with each other. So if you have different learnings, if you've had a different game variation, if you've had a great experience or a bad experience, let's all put it in the comments below and let's help the community to grow together. But I want to take a brief second out here to thank my players who without this would not be possible. I want to thank Tim, Aruna, Steve, and another Tim. And their LinkedIn's will be in the description below if you want to connect with them. Share this video with someone, uh, smash that like button. You can also support the channel in the description below if you desire. But uh, without further ado, let's roll that beautiful intro and let's flip some coins. Today, I have created a virtual penny game, which was uh, on the on Miro <laughs> and uh, on the Miroverse. So you can obviously go there to download it. Uh, but we have, uh, as with all of my templates, I plan on making any editable text purple. Uh, the play, the area that which you're going to play is going to be orange. And uh, any players will obviously be marked with the little player icon, as you see here. Uh, so that's kind of what you can expect from these templates moving forward. If you guys uh, who are in the uh, in the in playing the game with me today, if you want to go ahead and practice moving stuff back and forth, we have a practice area over here. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. You can, we obviously, in this game, we will be need to move circles back and forth. You will need to be able to change the color. Uh, you can do this by clicking on it, then clicking this icon here and changing the color from one of these two colors. Uh, it goes from the red to the green. And then obviously you'll just be, need, be needing to edit your name here, uh, not here, but yeah, on the board itself. So that being said, you guys can practice while I introduce the rest of the board. Uh, over here you have obviously the board, which can be very confusing, but basically it's just made up of instructions, all my header material, this uh, chart to put the times down and the different players. Now this game takes typically 45 minutes. It's not a short game. And uh, we're going to try to speed through it here uh, in a recording to show you guys. Uh, but the it usually takes around 10 players. Uh, today, we're going to be attempting it with five, including myself, uh, who's I'm going to be the customer. So I'm going to play that role. And so the usually you'll have a manager. And this manager will tie uh, this manager will time this worker, while this worker is doing the work of changing this uh, these set of circles to. You don't have usually you have a coin to flip over. Instead, we're going to be using colors to signify the flipping of the coins. So each coin must be flipped one by one. Uh, so you have to flip it, and then. Uh, move them over in the round increments of uh, first at 20, then at 10, then at 5, then at 1. And so we're going to start on round 1. You have to flip all 20 coins and then move them to the next person who will then flip them and change them uh, to the color corresponding below here uh, on the board. So first, I want to invite everyone to choose a worker because we only have five players. I'm obviously going to be the customer. So I'm going to put my name here. It's going to be James, obviously. So if you could follow suit and do that with the workers, choose which worker you want to be and write in your names. And because we're using five people, you will need your cell phones to time yourselves. You will obviously start uh, whenever the, start your time right before you uh, flip or whenever you flip the first coin. Oh, worker. 
Yes, workers, not uh, ah. managers. Sorry, <laughs> Ar Aruna sorry. was a manager in my in my previous one, I think. So <laughs> she's uh, getting used to that. Um, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No problem. The uh, but again, you're going to start the time uh, whenever you flip, but right before you flip the first coin, and then after you've moved them to the other person. So from from the first coin flipped until the uh, until you have moved them all. Is whenever you move, whenever you uh, start and stop the time, if that makes sense. Okay, so we have to take all of these coins and move them to the first one, flip them, or flip them first and then move them. Yes, flip them first. Okay. Uh, by changing the colors, and then move all twenty by shift. Uh, you can shift and left click here to select them all. Nope, Steve. Steve, what are you doing? Shift and left click. Not, we have not started the time yet. We have not started the game. So you don't move it one by one? No, so you need to move them. Not in this in, round. In round one, you need to move them in uh, groups of 20. So after you and, flipped all 20, that's when you move them. And how, and so remind me again, how do you group all of them? You do shift, no, control, shift, shift select, left click. click. Shift, shift, click, drag. And so you then, draw a box around them after you yeah. hit shift, select. Ah, and then, okay. Then you can move them after that. Okay. Here. So after that, and then after the next person gets them, they obviously start the time whenever they flip the first coin. And then after they move them, they stop the time. So- And uh, the color change, the only way I saw it is it that, that so two circles and you pick the color from the one circle. Yes, you don't, the, make sure not to pick this one because this is the, uh, the outline. You wanna choose this one right here that's already green. And whichever column they're in, this is the color that you change it to. So obviously if they flipped from red, uh, if they're, okay, someone has moved them all to green. <laughs> Steve? Hey, stop of course, it. Every, every game has trolls, right? So. <laughs> How is he taking the color? Every How is he game has a Steve. So quickly? He's a, he's a wizard. All right, so Steve. Uh, we're going to start this time now. Whenever I see the first color flipped, I'm going to start my timer since I'm the customer and I'm going to stop after Aruna has flipped the last coin back to green. And so uh, let's- uh, But we're gonna, we're gonna um, each of us, we're gonna have our own timers as well, right? Yes, yeah, so you're gonna be timing each of your own work and I'm going to be timing the combined work because I'm the customer, I want the whole product, I don't care. You know, so I'm just going to time by the time it gets to me. That's the time I care about. Do, do so, I just do when I start my work? Like say I was worker three, do I start my timer when I when worker one starts or when they get the first piece of work? So you are worker one, and I so worker, you kind of worker three. Worker one's pretty simple. Worker okay. Three, worker three start starts his time by the one, time he. Or when they when worker one starts their timer. Worker three starts their timer whenever they flip their first coin. Perfect. Okay. So whenever they change the color of their first circle, that's when worker three starts their time. Same for two and four, and the same as one. So whenever you Perfect. start, whenever you flip a coin, and you're the worker, that's when your manager would normally start your timer. But you're going to start your timer since we don't have any managers. So. So last question then is a worker four. That's me. After I flip them all to green, do I have to move this? circles to some place or leave them no. there? No. Once once you have flipped everything to green, the product is to me, is considered to me and completed. Good questions. Um, and also you of course have to flip them all one by one. You cannot just shift select them and hit, oh my gosh, they're all because I know I know Steve is I know Steve is going first. So I have to make this I have to make, I have to say this because <laughs> it's abundantly clear for yes. Steve. Okay. Yeah, feel the burn. Yes, feel the burn, Steve. All right. So on on your mark, Steve. Oh, yeah. Get ready. Set. Go.
All right, so I've stopped the timer. Yeah. And uh, now we're going to uh, capture these times down here on this handy dandy board. And Steve has already wrote, written in his. Excellent, Steve. So if, if you want to go ahead and put your times uh, based on which worker you are um, down in the text below, total, it took seven minutes, 51 seconds. If I can edit my own text here, what's going on? All right, so I was a laggard, whatever. <laughs> and that's my time. All right. I so. hear too much better, not to worry. Is that, do I need to lie on my time? I need to lie on this. I'm, oh, you know what? I'm like, no, let's not lie. Off. Let's, this is going to be. Um, you can't lie? Jesus. Yes. <laughs> you should probably round it up, right? I should round this up. You know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, you're in like a half second. A... <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, guys. So, uh, obviously, to clear the board, you want to shift click and just delete all the circles. And then for round two, you're just going to collect the new circles over here on the left drag them in and you are reset for the next round and okay. steve you get to go first and now you're going to pass them after you have uh done 10 coin after you flip 10 coins to the ten red coin, color okay. you're going to select 10 of them which is half of them and pass them the ones that have been flipped by the way to to tim nolan and so tim whenever you get this first batch from steve please again all of you start the time whenever you flip the first coin to the color under your column and then stop it after you have passed it. And, uh, and we're going to stop it after we pass both of them, right? Yes, or you have to stop the time after you pass all 20 coins from your area to the next one, gotcha. to the next worker. All right, I'm going to reset mine. And uh, Steve, whenever you're ready, I will start as soon as I see your first coin flipped. All right, I am stopping the time. All righty, so put your times down here. I got a total time of four minutes and five seconds. Look at that. And we will delete these circles. And we'll start with a fresh, fresh batch for round three. And now to Steve, and whenever you get five uh, coins complete, that's when you need to shift them to the next uh, to the next worker, and so on and so forth. So when Tim gets five complete, he'll shift it to Tim D, and then when Tim D gets five complete, he'll shift it to Aruna, and so on and so forth until all twenty have been processed. All right, and uh, Tim, whenever you want, uh, sorry, Steve, whenever you want to go. I'll reset the timer and it's already started. Okay, cool. Let's all record our times down in five. Five was an interesting round. And uh, Steve, uh, whenever we started off, did something very interesting. I'm sure we'll learn to take some learnings away from later. He didn't go down in order as I thought a player would. Uh, instead, he decided to go start from the top and you know go out of what I thought would be 
logical. So that you know, we'll, we'll talk about that later in the retro. Uh, Steve is his own man, evidently. Finally, I beat Aruna. Not a team player. Finally, I beat Aruna. That's all that matters. Okay. You know, <laughs> you know, you are so special, Steve. What can I tell you? All right. So, Steve, now uh, for round four, you're going to pass them after you. You're going to start the time after you flip the first one, but after you flip the first one, you're going to also pass it each one now to Tim. Um, and we're going to pass them one by one instead of in groups of five. We're just going to do them all individually now. So whenever you want to start, Steve. All right. Excellent. All right. So that is the end of the fourth round. Let's put our times in. And we will look at some learnings here real quick before we start the next game, uh, which will probably be the next video for if anyone's watching. Finally, I beat everyone. Shut up, Steve. <laughs> All right. First so, mover advantage. Just gonna say, I'm getting the big bonus this round. Hey, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> How can it be 251 if I logged two, two minutes and 38 seconds there? It's not even yeah, right. something say, doesn't work. Because it's the time from the start to the finish. And so you got to start yeah. so many seconds earlier yep. than you normally did. So actually, that's, that's the total time from Steve's first flip to the time all 20 were in Aruna's uh in Aruna's section so and completed so actually that it does work out all right and we were all working on it there was a point in time when we all were working on them right running in parallel instead yes. of serial yep. yep so um there's that and obviously we get to see you know obviously whenever we hit one piece flow if we're able to reduce our complexity of work to where we can you know to where i actually do real one piece flow then we saw the time uh reduced dramatically so um as opposed to you know passing large batches of work batches of work not batches of work uh batch you know, batch I, yes <laughs> the batch I. bachi I, I don't speak bachi um <laughs> so anyways uh obviously we have the additional learnings from the penny game but one of the things that i thought was really interesting that I didn't take away from the normal penny game that I got out of this. And you guys can tell me if you're wrong because you may have played it more times than I have, but how you pass the work matters as well as the, um, you know, just the fact that you're passing the work and what are the, I, I want to give you guys some time to talk about that. And, you know, I'm not Steve, Steve, did you do that on purpose? I tried that... to screw you guys as much as possible. <laughs> okay. I can. I want my bonus. Yeah, so I'm playing the role of the just of the jaded worker. Play All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, "Hey, it's Min Max." It's Min Major. Max. Hey, there's only so much bonus to go around. <laughs> Every cent you don't get is a penny I get. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, gosh. Zero no, I, I, self sacrifice. Just saying. Uh, James, that's a good observation because, uh, yeah, it's it is a little bit different, and I guess that's kind of represents real life, right? I mean, if you're you know if you're getting a handoff from someone else, how they do their work's a little bit different than how you do it, and uh, you know, and the results may vary. Yeah. It, actually, actually, in that second round, I was trying something. I was trying to what was I trying to do? I was trying to ma maximize my work by because the um, in my game. The uh, the drop down hid the one below it. Mm -hmm. It was faster for me to go back to on the side. Yes. Yeah. And then back across the top, then to go down. So going down meant I had to click. It was going down meant it meant I'd be slower. Right. But going, mm -hmm. but going across horizontally meant I'd be faster. So that was the initial idea. I was actually trying to maximize my work. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't 
um, that I was trying to screw you guys. That was just an added benefit. <laughs> <laughs> I believe He's that. He's trying to maximize his own said. efficiency. And it just so happened that an output right. was screwing us. <laughs> right. But he said going down didn't make you faster. Going horizontally didn't make you slower. Yeah. Going horizontally made me faster. Made you faster. Yeah. Yeah. But in yeah, this particular instance, it's, it's a limitation of the tool. So I, I had that experience. I mean, when I, cause I was able to see both. It was only the ones in the middle when we were yep. doing round one that I had to struggle with, you know, cause so, I had, cause I was so just getting in my way. Usually it was just that it was faster, but then when I figured out you guys were screwed up by it, I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> oh, he had more incentive to jack with us. Well, <laughs> obviously yeah, really though. Nice. The we, one what, thing though. Thinking, like put things on top of each other when I move them and stuff. All right, Can we go right. back to the timing, James, for a second? Just yeah, sure. I'll share my screen real quick. You guys never, you guys have never worked in a factory, have you? No. No. <laughs> worked at a restaurant. No. All right. It's a little like hammers. a factory. Yeah. All right. So, Rena, what was your observation? I I guess I wanted to say that. Um, did it matter what the speed of the previous person was? To you? Did the previous person's speed impact your speed in any round? In other words, are you only going to go as fast as the slowest point in the chain? Um, I would think that by the time you hit round, yes, in round 10, five, and one, because at some point you're going to be doing handoffs earlier than in round 20 when you're just handing everything over. Right. So mm -hmm. in round 10, you're going to be pat you, you, at some point your work, if they, if they delay you starting uh, the second batch of 10, then that will delay your finishing and increase your times. Well, and if you yes. look, if you look at the columns, Aruna, uh, mm -hmm. like on your pick your column, uh, you were four, your times, oh, round two is interesting, but uh, if you look at all the rounds, it actually took you longer yet. Right. The customer right. got value sooner. That's what I'm trying to. Yeah, right. You know, which is interesting, right? It took me longer than yeah. most of you, and yet the total time was shorter. Because yeah, like James was saying, we're running in parallel, right? We were all working together at some point. Yeah, but as we go the, farther in the rounds, I, I I think this also has something something to do with uh, Little's rule, Little's formula, yeah. and uh, batch size and queuing. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and certainly exactly. it's. It's more, it, it, there's, there's a lot more involved in it than what we can contain in. in you know, yeah, but this is a retro. really great uh, example yeah. of smaller batch sizes at the end still leads to a short. I, uh, I noticed another observation too. Uh, I don't know if you caught it, James. Um, notice how loud we were in round one, haunting and all that stuff. And by the time we got to round four, it was silence because we were all busy right. concentrating. We didn't have time <laughs> to talk. <laughs> Except for yeah. Frazier. So what Not only when he got doing? done, but it even <laughs> yeah. he had at least <laughs> one minute and 40 seconds of silence for Frazier, too. Yeah. So. There's a good takeaway there, right? There's a good takeaway. Yeah. There, which is, you know, when people are maybe. It was focus. Well, if only one purpose person was doing all the work and the three of us were waiting on that person, then it's like a, an empty mind, the devil's workshop sort of thing. You're just waiting there. <laughs> <laughs> bantering nonsense. Wait, wait. Are you saying that Fraser's mind is empty, Aruna? No. no oh my God. He was actually well, working. I, the rest of us were empty. If only I thought of it. That's what I'm saying. If only I would have been talking to Aruna and, and you know, Tim. Uh -huh. Trying to distract them. But that drawing was... drawing this back to a serious note, we, yeah. okay. obviously, we we have, uh, Aruna is right, whenever, and so is Tim, when everyone's working, uh, obviously there's, you can do less harm to the business <laughs> if everyone actually has stuff to do. Um, but mm. I, I really want to jump back to how are you handing off the work? Because I mean, I, I, I have one mentors, uh, ringing, uh, words in my head that anytime you have handoffs, you have waste. So obviously you could obviously try to figure out how to reduce the handoffs, but this game obviously has four different workers in it for a purpose. But, um, the, for this, for the sake of, uh, the, our talk here whenever you're handing off the work to someone and like how you know do you even think about that or is it just the fact that your work is done and um is are you handing off at a size that someone else can is not going to be 
Sorry, go ahead, Runa. No, some, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but go some ahead. of us can consume easily, right? It's not yes. only the, it's the frequency of the handoffs and the size of whatever it is you're handing off. Yes. So I guess waste is a, is a proportion of that. If you have, so if you have fewer handoffs, which we did in the first round, we had large batches, but you were the slowest there. We had the most number of handoffs in the last round, but we had the smallest size of handoff, but we were the fastest there. Can't get around, you can't get away from the waste of handoff, but um, the probability of errors, mistakes would be less. So that's that kind of waste is mitigated. Yeah, yeah, and it, a lot of that goes into um, optimizing the whole versus optimizing the part. Uh, a Apart. subset. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, Aruna, that if you bring up a really good point, which is where is that sweet spot where you're, you're you've optimized it enough to where you've leaned it out op yeah. to, to, to the point where it's balanced. You don't have yeah. excess waste, but yet you're not so streamlined that you're creating issues somewhere else. And Tim, I would say that was round two for most of us, except mm -hmm. for Steve, right? I mean, uh, we all became more efficient, I guess, with the you know the two stack handoff. Our time all went down in round two, and then it kind of went back up again with more possible, you know, the more right. handoffs. Yeah, I just but, it seemed like, but it but it, it didn't help the customer. Yeah, yeah. It, exactly. Right. In that, in, in I think that was going to be the point where James James would chime in and say, but as a customer, the faster I see value is the only thing I care about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and then, yeah. and then, it, and then, it, then it becomes, is the customer will, willing to pay for a faster delivery of value? And, and, and that's, that's the, you know, is this a feature? Is this a benefit? I, you know, that, and that's a whole deeper conversation. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, uh, you, go ahead. But, but the, I have to agree the focus on values of the customer. I mean, as a, I mean, I was playing the evil worker there, but as and doing a mighty fine job, by the way. <laughs> it's like I've worked with you before. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, but you know, it's the it's probably the customer that's important. What did you get from the coin flip game? Uh, what variations have you played? Do you have an impactful story? Write it in the comments below. Again, it's everyone's thoughts and uh, viewpoints that help us to grow and learn together and we'd love to know what those are for you i i make sure to read all the comments so if you ever do comment i will uh, get back to you as soon as i can uh, but i do read them all i can assure you uh, if you are looking for the templates please check the description below uh, the link to the miro template will be in there don't forget to smash that like button and keep on learning guys <laughs>